if you rewind this video and look at the very top of the video as it starts, you won't hear any sound, but you'll notice something interesting. So try it now. Rewind the video. You know, look up here. Look at this little feeder and see what you see. It's always interesting to me when things get tough, you know, harder to do than what they normally should be. You know, things seem to pile up on you and you get kind of like distracted or you get to where it's like, you know, all the little things get in the way. You know, kind of like all the little foxes, they say, you know, and all the little, you know, things piled up that you didn't do that now you need to kind of like do a spring cleaning. Well, you know, I don't know about you, but that happens to me a lot. <laughs> I'm pretty good at operating, you know, on the on the fly, so to speak, and you know, by the seat of my pants, and as the Lord leads, you know, doing what God wants me to do that day. But at times, God slows me down and makes me take one step at a time. He makes me go through the motions of beginning to do the devotion of life that he wants to perform in me, meaning that there's sometimes some traditions or some things you should do every day. You know, like take a shower, get cleaned up, you know, those are kind of nice. I'm sure your wife appreciates that. <laughs> Shave. But likewise, you know, in your devotional time, you need to spend that quality time reading and praying and doing those normal things that you should do. It should be a normal pattern of your life. But also in your life, sometimes, you know, there's things that pile up on you, things that get in your way. And you need to take care of them. And if it's a big pile, like sometimes mine gets, then you have to take it one day at a time, one step at a time. And that's interesting for me because whenever I take one step, it's almost like a door opens. Then I take another step and I see how something works. Then I take another step and then things seem to come together. And I take another step and then all of a sudden there's more to do and more I can organize and get put in the right place. That's why at my house, life is always in a flux, so to speak. It's always changing and being rearranged. It's always going through motions and it's never standing still only, unless it's waiting on the Lord. <laughs> and he says to stand still. But for me, it's always like a development thing. I always see like opportunities to, you know, move plants around, you know, to better have them to grow, or you know, redevelop the porch, you know, so to speak, so that I can, you know, kind of enjoy it more. Or you know, I see how a piece of wood, you know, if I just shaped it or changed it or tied something to it, I can make it into something else. And that's kind of what's been going on in this year, 2013. While we would want to have gotten out into you know, doing a lot more, you know, when it came to the websites and everything else, God had us actually working on the porch and the house and kind of moving things around a little bit, you know, to make it more convenient for my wife and I because something I've discovered, maybe you have too, you get tired. <laughs> if you're like me, you've got lots of things to do and if you're not like me, you probably down an energy drink. Well, I don't do those. <laughs> They're just a little too sickly sweet for me, you know. And personally, I'm not really into legal hype. But, you know, you, you, I, I wind up taking a nap, you know, now. And it's kind of like interesting that I have to take a nap in order to keep up with what I'm doing, you know. And it's funny because, you know, the things that I've led into my mind throughout the day, I seem to see in my nap time, you know. It's kind of like, ew. Is that what's in my brain? I need to get rid of that, you know, because junk in, junk out, you know, and it gets all regurgitated in my head, and then it's kind of like, oh, man, I need to watch what I'm looking at. And that's kind of what you need to do in these latter days. You need to watch what you're looking at. You need to maybe cut down on all the freedoms you have, because, you see, you have the freedom to really do anything you want to do. I mean, you really can. If you were wise enough and smart enough with the Word of God, you could probably run out, you know, and live anywhere you wanted to. You know, and God would, God would take care of you. It may not be the best for you. It may not be the worst for you. But, you know, if you really know the Word of God, God would take care of you and bring you eventually to where He wants you to be. 
But if you want to walk with him and talk with him in an intimate and personal way, kind of like seeing the things that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, then you really want to get rid of the distractions, the things that seem to accumulate, the things that really kind of just pile up on you. Because as you get rid of those distractions, as those things that you could be busy about, you need to focus in on what is important. You need to kind of like zero in on the things that really need to be done. Because there are lots of things that you could waste time on. And me personally, I don't have much time to waste. <laughs> I'm getting old. And I think you are too. But you know, we're running out of time also, as far as the end of the world's concerned. Because quite frankly, we're going to see it. <laughs> and more and more people are beginning to realize that. The only thing is, is that when they're realizing it, they're getting into all these other things also that they get so caught up into them that they don't realize they're really wasting time. You know, like politics. You know, How many times have you heard every four years, it's the end of the world fiscally, it's the end of the world politically, it's the end of the world Republican or Democratically, it's the end of the world for the people, it's the end of the world for rights, it's the end of the world of this, that, or the other thing. You know. They keep saying it every four years because, after all, you got to hype up the people because they get tired of hearing it. So you got to make up something, you know, that's really not going to happen, and pretend like it happened. Ooh, okay, you know, and then keep conning the people because that's what politicians do. They talk a lot, don't they? Well, you could waste time with that if you want to, because remember, you have the freedom to do anything you want to do. So if you want to be a political Christian, hey, go be a political Christian. Good luck with that. Let me know how that works out for you every four years. Or maybe two, depending upon where you're at. Me? Nah, I don't think so. I'd rather pray for whoever gets elected. Now, you could be, you know, like a social Christian. You know, kind of like, hey, you know, we got our little potlucks and our little thingies going on, you know, so we, we're always constantly setting up and tearing down, you know, our little functions, you know. After all, you know, I got to keep those people fed, you know, and, and you know, watered, you know, and they got to enjoy themselves, you know, when they're at church. So, you know, we have our little social network, you know, where we make sure everybody has a good time. You know, we want to have the right worship team, and the right music and sound, you know, and everything's got to go just right. Otherwise, the people leave, go somewhere else. I'd be led by the Lord. <laughs> oh well, you know, but me, you know, I'm not much of a social light, you know. I kind of like like to go to church when I want to go to church. When I want to go to church, I go to church. When I don't want to go to church, I don't go to church. <laughs> and I'm not much of a socialite that way because, you know, kind of like what I said to look at the beginning of this video, I kind of have my own little social network going on. Hmm. It has nothing to do with technology. Whoa! Now somebody's going to come along and say, well, he's anti-technology. No, I'm not. I'm pro-God. I'm not anti-anything. <laughs> but in all your ways, acknowledge God in everything you do, and you'll find He'll direct you. But if you don't acknowledge God in everything, then you'll find that you'll be distracted by anything that comes along. And you won't really see the blessings that there are in life for you. Because you see, every day, whether you know it or not, no matter how bad off you are or how worse you think life has become for you, there's a blessing in disguise somewhere. God's will is in it. So that means God's promise is with it. So God's word will be through it and somehow you'll fulfill it. Because God will do according to what he has said he would do with you. Of course, you got to know what he's going to do with you, don't you? <laughs> Well, you kind of got a choice between one and two options. You could take door number one, which says a blessing, you know, where you are a vessel of honor. Or you could take door number two, where you're a vessel of wrath. God dusts you, you know, smacks you down, wipes you out, and you're destroyed. Now, sometimes you may be a vessel of honor, and you may feel like you got smacked down, you know, and destroyed. But that's just because he's, you know, making you like clay, you know, he's going to kind of like, you know, fashion you and remake you and make you into something else that you didn't think you wanted to be. Once you get there, you'll like it. Trust me. <laughs> Try it. You'll like it. But the point is, you get the choice. Honor, wrath. Honor, wrath. Honor, wrath. Your choice. 
he'll work it out because he promised he would. He said he would present you faultless before the Father with exceeding joy. Now that doesn't mean everyone, because you see, you kind of got to work it too. You got to work with God, not against God. Because if you're working against what God is doing, sooner or later he quits working. You know, and Chuck Smith used to sing a song that said, you know, there is a line I know not where, where even God, where angels fear to tread, where God has decreed he would not trespass, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know these old hymns, you know, I wasn't raised in the church, but something about how God won't cross over some line, you know, and we know that because Pharaoh hardened his heart, Pharaoh hardened his heart so many times that finally God says, okay, fine, you want to harden your heart? I'll harden your heart. And that leads me to something else, that you know, you got to be careful when you're dealing with God, because sometimes people pray for something, God gives them, and it wasn't the best thing for them. <laughs> Boy, you better watch what you pray for, you might get it. <laughs> it's the old expression. Sometimes it's a learning lesson that God gives you because you're better off asking God to give you what you need than telling him what you want. Because he just might give it to you if you bug him enough. And I sure don't want half of what I've asked for. Believe me, I'd rather have what God wants for me than what I want for me. And that's the point of where you are in life. What do you want to do with 2013? What do you want to do with all the things that have piled up in your life? Are you going to take them down one by one? Are you going to walk through or walk around the mess that you've made of your life? Are you going to you know, kind of climb up this mountain that you've made of your circumstances you know, and just ignore it and run off and hide? Because your sin will find you out, and so will your circumstances and consequences. They catch up with you eventually. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I had six speeding tickets from Southern California that, man, it took a long time before I finally got them suckers paid off. But when I did, whoo, I was thrilled. But you see, back in those days, you could get as many speeding tickets as you wanted to, sort of. You just had to pay more money. <laughs> and I did. Ooh, consequences. I hate them. <laughs> sin is fun, but consequences, man, they're a mother. <laughs> And that's what sin does to you. It's not the sin itself that kills you. It's the consequence of sin that kills you. For all the sin that falls short of the glory of God, and the, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's right. That's a fact, Jack. You will die in your sins unless you do something about it. And that's kind of like that mountain, you know, of all these kind of like, you know, things that have come up in your life and kind of like been dug up in your heart, you know, kind of like overwhelmed you in this new year, you know, that now that your your New Year's resolutions are all thrown out the window, you know, and your your resolve has gone, you know, flat on the floor, you know, and it's the dead of winter, which I never understood why we do New Year's resolutions in the dead of winter. <laughs> Ain't gonna work. <laughs> but now that you're kind of moving on into the new year, it's like, what are you gonna do with all you got to do. One step at a time. That's the way God works. God doesn't tell you to read the Bible. He says, read my word. Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart, it says provocation. He tells you to start somewhere and just keep reading. Keep going. Jesus used the word overcomer. He said, overcome these things. He didn't say he's going to take them away. He didn't say, oh, it's the devil. He's making you like, you know, Mr. Nasty because it's Mr. Nasty making you nasty. No. He said, overcome them because you have them. It's your fault. You did it. It's your problem. That's right. Yeah. Now, the way you overcome them is what God wants you to do. He wants you to learn of him because he's meek and lowly and he's gentle and he's tender. Now, you may think the opposite because you've been reading, you know, like only Old Testament going, oh, he's mean and green and, you know, monster machine, you know, and he's just stomps on, romps on, you know, and knocks everything over and knocks things down, you know, it's like, no, not my father, maybe yours, but not mine. You see, God is love, and because he loves me, he wants to bring me to a place of understanding why, how, and where he does those things and still appreciate the fact that he is meek and lowly and tender and gentle and loving and kind and gentle and will not cause even a smoking flax to be put out or a reed to be bent over, which is pretty tender. It's kind of like, I'm trying to think if I got something over here, yeah, one of these things. You know, it's kind of like, 
I don't know if you got any. Uh, it's a spider plant, but if you have a spider plant. I don't know about you, but one of the most worthless things that you can do to a spider plant is break its leaf. <laughs> you know, like this. Well, not that one. Where's one? Okay, fine. This one. Once you break that leaf, you hear that little snap. That sucks. Because <laughs> then that leaf just doesn't look good. You know? It's kind of like, that's sucky. You know, you don't want a spider plant with a broken leaf. So you kind of come back by, you know, later on and you either tear it off or you cut it, you know, so it begins to grow and a new growth comes out. And that's what God does with you. You see, circumstances in your life have broken things in you. You're pretty broken up and beat up and kind of like disconformed and malformed and kind of like, you know, twisted and wristed and all kinds of things. Well. God begins to work in you and on you to change you, to cause new growth to come out of you. Just like that plant. It'll spring up a new leaf, and pretty soon it'll be bushy, and you'll never see the old. That's why I try to tell people, don't ignore the old life, because it's still there. It's just been overwhelmed with new growth. And that's kind of what God does in your life. You're a planting of the Lord. You're a plant that has new growth potential. You could grow up into a tree of righteousness or a bush of who knows. But the point is, God will cause you to grow and you will develop into the person he wants you to be if you are willing to let him do it as opposed to your doing it. So when you see all that stuff and junk and everything that's in the way and you get distracted by the world and its ways and you want to get into politics or you want to get into religion or you want to get into social or you want to get into gun controls or all these silly things that people argue about. Remember that little uh, kind of like thing we saw at the beginning of this? Why not be a hummingbird? You ever thought about hummingbirds? No? Neither did I. <laughs> Till they suddenly invaded my world. <laughs> and now I'm fascinated. <laughs> and hummingbirds, they can fly a long ways. Or they can stick around when they're fed. As a matter of fact, they'll go wherever their food is. But you know, them hummingbirds are fascinating little guys, you know? I mean, first of all, try catching one. <laughs> Good luck. They're pretty friendly, though. They come up pretty close. I've had one this close already. Blew my mind. Looked me right in the eye. But Hummingbirds, they, they tend to just take nectar out of these like red plants, you know, and they really like red, but out of any plants, really, and they kind of like, you know, cross-pollinate, and they kind of take the nectar from one plant, put it in another, and cause both plants to grow more. You ever thought about being like that? You know, taking the Word of God from one place, using it someplace else, and causing both to grow? You haven't? Wow. Maybe you ought to become like a hummingbird. Man, imagine flying like that. Whew. Man, you got helicopter chopper wings, you know. <laughs> of course, then again, I think some of you are like hummingbirds. You know, you're buzzing all over the place. <laughs> now, the only thing is, is my hummingbirds, while you're used to seeing the hummingbirds, you know, always come to, you know, the wings, most of them just sit here and drink real long. Matter of fact, the big ones, they'll come up here and sit on this little edge, and they'll just sit there and look around, get that, look around, get that. Seriously, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of kind of sad in a way, you know, you think of hummingbirds always flittering. I got a couple that just sit there and suck it up and suck it down and get that. <laughs> but then they go on and they use that throughout their venue or routine that they do with other plants. And so I know my plants are getting pollinated. They're getting propagated. They're getting changed. They're getting blessed by God. And you know, God has an order in creation for all of that, as well as he does in his salvation that he's placed in you. Creation reveals God's plan. Salvation reveals God's will. And the will for you is to know him as creation does, as you're meant to. 
because all of creation groans and travail waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. And soon, you will see, <laughs> the hummingbird just flew by, so I'm looking around. You will see the Lord's return. And when he does, you may see more things on heaven and earth than you ever imagined possible. Insisted, the trees shall clap their hands and the mountains shout for joy. Now people keep telling me that God needs technology and I keep saying, I don't think he needs technology. I think you need to read the word of God because there's more on heaven and earth that we don't know about than what we think we do know about. So maybe in this new year of 2013, going forward, you know, don't be surprised if you need to one step at a time kind of clean up your mess, you know, the best part that God tells you to clean up. And then sometimes, you know, kind of crawl over it, you know, and move on with it, you know, and deal with it. Or sometimes, you know, grow a new limb like the plant, you know, the spider plant. Or maybe just be like that hummingbird and just enjoy life, you know, going from one blessing to another, just spreading the joy. Because I don't know about you, but every time I see a hummingbird, <laughs> it just gives me a kick in the head. <laughs> and that's what you're supposed to be. Could you imagine if people saw you coming and were glad to see you? Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be great if you could always be everywhere with a smile on your face, with a joy in your heart, with a song on your lips, with the glory of the Lord, you know, shining forth from your face so brightly that, man, they know where you've been. <laughs> you've been to church. <laughs> or better yet, you've been in the presence of God. Ooh, imagine that for 2013. I think that's what I want for you. You know, maybe between you and I, let's make a little deal here. You get in God's presence, I'll get in God's presence. Let's get together with God, you know, and let's see if we both can't shine. Let's shine for this new year. Yeah, you know, give it everything we got. Clean up our mess, you know, clean up our act. And lay aside and put aside all these sins that so easily beset us. And all these distractions that so easily attract us, you know. And get busy with what we're supposed to be doing. You know, kind of like videos and sharing the word of God. Declaring the gospel. Discipling people. Encouraging each other. You know, sure, take care of business. You know, your little things that you got to do. You know, jobs, all, they're just a little thing. They're not the big thing. Because you know what the important thing is. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Just do your duty as God has given you the ability to do it. But make sure that every day you start your day with the Lord your God and ask him to lead you in the way that you should go. Because like that hummingbird, I have no idea when they come or where they go. And it's kind of like the wind. Whenever there's no wind, my hummingbirds are all over the place. <laughs> Maybe you're like that too. I know that's the way my life's been. Maybe God may have something for you to do or someplace to go or somewhere to be.